Hey, welcome back. So now we are diving into the area known as big data. And no pun intended, of course, but it is a massive topic and an important one, especially if you're recruiting in this area. Just to reiterate, you really should have done the basic recruitment, uh, recruiting database masterclass before you dive into this one, because I'm going to assume that you have a lot of the terminology already under your belt before we move into some of these uh, advanced concepts. I mentioned in that masterclass a lot about data. But there was one specific example I gave, that as a society, we are so completely hooked on data. Now, should you feel the, the natural urge at this point to exclude yourself from that statement, well, ask yourself the following. When was the last time you carried out an internet search, sent an email, did some online shopping, downloaded a song, or searched for hotel directions on Google Map? All of these activities, of course, involve digital data transfer with the aid of highly intelligent storage systems somewhere along the way. The ways or methods in which you carried out many of these activities will, of course, have been monitored, assessed, and they will ultimately yield vital pointers as to your habits as an individual, who you are currently, and who you are likely to become in the future. This data is recorded somewhere, in some form. Now it's either disjointed and unstructured and scattered, or it's digested and meticulously recorded properly. And so as a result, your personality has its own unique fingerprint in cyberspace. Actually, the problem for companies today lies not in getting hold of that data. We know that that particular skill has been honed to perfection over the years and consumers like you and I have long since given up trying to resist giving the data across to these people. The last two decades have been dedicated to establishing the best ways, either covertly or otherwise, with which they can extract data about customer behavior. This could be through your browsing patterns, your shopping habits, or even through IoT-based appliances in your universe. So everything you do online leaves that footprint, but more importantly, over time, it builds up this unique digital profile relating to you. The problem, of course, arises not in obtaining the data anymore, but in making sense of the huge amounts of data flowing into that company's IT system. These companies are simply swamped with the stuff. I gave that example in the database masterclass. It's, I, I did emphasize that it's probably a charming and antiquated statistic by the time you view this. But in case you haven't gone through that yet, the statistic I like to cite goes a bit like this. We had the internet in 1998. Some of you are very young, but the internet was around in 1998, and we even had devices that were, of course, internet ready at that point. There were PCs that were uh, internet ready, um, so we were generating internet traffic. We had laptops, which could be made internet ready through these things called dongles, which you attached to them. And even our mobile phones had rudimentary internet access. They weren't great, but they were internet ready. But the point being that we were internet ready in 1998 and we were generating traffic, uh, internet data in 1998, 99 and 2000. Now here's the statistic. If you took those years as an average, so if you took an average of all the data we generated in 1998, 99 and 2000, well today in 2018, we generate the same amount of data every 60 seconds. So what we used to do in a year, we now do every 60 seconds. Now, if that sounds astounding, the caveat is that if you're watching this any time after 2019, the figure is probably closer to 30 seconds and undoubtedly marching relentlessly to the one second point. What we used to do in a year, we will eventually generate that data in 
a second. Someone recently did point out to me, quite correctly, that although we do generate so much data today, there is actually much more useful substance in that early batch of data. And, and they're absolutely correct. The weight of significance was infinitely more substantial in those earlier tiny shards of data than there is in the sea of irrelevant data that we upload unknowingly today. So we're a flaky parchment from ancient times or a clay tablet from history, which really comprises of less than a kilobyte of data in today's terminology. It may not be able to boast the bandwidth of today, but what it relayed in terms of information was much more significant and rich. On the other hand, in contrast, today someone's personal Google Drive may have terabytes of data on it, but really not that useful in essence. No more than 10% of actually substantive meaningful information could be derived from that data. The remaining 90% um, is stuff that we would clean out and purge if we ever had a spare month or so to do it. You know what I mean, those repeat photos of exactly the same group scene in a restaurant taken five times, just in case someone's eyes were shut or someone forgot to smile. Those numerous irrelevant images of um, funny animals with captions sent to you on WhatsApp. Screenshots from three years ago of location maps when you were going to meet somebody in a, 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 a pub somewhere. The numerous close-up of pictures uh, with your fingers blocking the lens. All of that rubbish which we never quite got around to deleting before they were so efficiently backed up to your cloud storage. All of this really takes up a large amount of storage on the planet's ever bloated cloud account. The task today of data analysts, data scientists, business intelligence experts really is about sifting through that rubbish and finding out the essence of true data to find out who you really are.